more and more and more away. Um, you know, I'm kind of, uh, I kind of, I don't really know how to say it, but I, I just drew more and more away, right? And, um, you know, I have a real, you were saying with the thoughts and everything, and not to let it consume you, well, you know, I have a lot, a lot of problems with my anger and stuff like that still, so I let certain thoughts come in, and that's all I've been thinking about the last week. Mm -hmm. Like, I would lay in bed, and even, and I hadn't been praying or reading my Bible or at all, and I've been wondering, kind of like, why? It's like, it consumes me so much that it was just like hate. It wasn't mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. anger anymore, it's mm -hmm. hate. But, uh, it's funny, because when I was, you know, when I was facing all the prison time that I was, and I was saying, you know, I'll never, you know, just give me this one chance and I'll never turn back. But then I find myself within like, you know what I mean, not even that, a couple months, I'm already saying, all right, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. But, but then I, you know, I was up there praying when, uh, when music was playing and stuff and, uh, and, you know, it, and I just felt, you know what I mean, I asked him to just draw close to me anymore because I couldn't do it anymore Ooh. by myself. And, and I just like, it's like, like, I literally like felt him coming down and just like, put his hands on me and just sit next to me like I was yeah. right there. Nice, nice. Thank you. Know, like, Thank you. It's, it's, no matter, it's, just, it's nice to know that no matter what we do, yeah. you know, he's always right there not you know, just waiting for us to come back. You know? Exactly. He surely is. We may separate ourselves, but he's always there. And he's, he's not just complacent, you know, just idly there. He's actively drawing you back to it. It's just that sometimes we get so far out there, we don't we don't recognize it. You know, we stiff arm him. But that's a good testimony. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, this is from earlier when you were talking about um, love. It just came to me that, um, you know, God uh, emphasizes that we walk in love so much because like it says in first Peter four eight that love covers a multitude of sins. That's right. And um, you know, it just gives us a little example of what those are in uh, Romans chapter thirteen where it says if man does not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, right. do not covet, they're all summed up in one rule of love your neighbor. That's exactly right. If you love somebody won't do those things. That's right. Well, that kind of brought to mind something we said that uh, I don't know how these guys think about it, but I believe love is an action. Yeah. It's not just a feeling, a butterfly feeling. Right. That's right. And the way that Very we good. act shows how we love God. Very good. Love is an action, and exactly that. Right. And uh, you know, we we've confused love again. Going back to renewing our minds, so we'll think right. We've confused the world's love with God's love. It's totally different. The world's love is we call it love, but it's really love, most times love. But God's love is no greater love as a man if he laid down his life for his friend. In other words, self-sacrificing. In other words, what can I do for you instead of what can you do for me? That's real love. And so that's what uh, that's very good. And that's, that comes from renewing our thought life. It, it's not in natural man to think this way. You just see, up until, I don't know what, uh, what ages you are, but... Uh, I was probably 25 when I got saved, 24, 25. Up until that time, I thought the way the world thought. That's all I knew. I was trained well by the world. I operated in the world. I manipulated through the world. Everything came through the world. I thought like the world. When I got saved, my spirit man got saved. My heart was saved. But my mind was still thinking and acting that way. Okay, so therefore a lot of my actions were still that way. And, and yes, I was saved. And, and God in His mercy and His gentleness... Just keeps on saying, don't do it this way. He whispers in your ear, don't do this in conviction, don't do this, don't do that. Until he cleans all that stuff up with the washing of the water of the Word. But, but it's a process of a lot of time. He's still cleaning stuff up in my life. Okay? But it comes by me renewing my mind and, and saying no to the way I used to think and yes to God's Word saying this is the way I'm supposed to think. All right. So here, let's go back to James one. It says that. Okay, don't say that God is the tempter. He's not. Verse fourteen. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Okay, that means something draws him and enticed. So, so that would be like a thought. Saying, hmm, I'd like to have that, even though it's somebody else's. Oh, I'm going to get it. Verse fifteen. Then when that desire that lust that thought hath conceived it brings forth sin that's the action and then when that action is finished there's death it's a snake
snare. You know, if you set any of you done any trapping, you might live out in the woods where you done trapping. Yeah. He set he set it for a live uh, catch the animal live in a live trap. He set the bait in there, and the animal thinks, "Ooh, good food." But he don't understand that when he goes into that trap, that snare, it's going the door is going to shut, and he's going to be trapped. Well, that's the way it is. The devil does it up. Ooh, this looks good. And you're thinking on, "Ooh, yeah, I'd like to have that." And then, boom, the door shuts behind you because you took that thing, and you, and you, and when you took it, it came that action. And when it comes to the action, it brings forth death. Brings forth death. Well, we don't want that in our life. We're going to renew our mind. We're going to walk according to God's word, and we're going to walk with God. Turn to Matthew six. This has helped me a lot in uh, learning how to deal with songs. Matthew chapter six. Verse 25 says, actually, let's start verse 22. This is, good. this is good stuff. Verse 22, the light of the body is the eye. What you see, that, that's, a, that's a gate that lets in thoughts. Okay? There's an eye gate, there's an ear gate, there's a, you have five physical senses. But the, the body, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, if your eye is single, remember double mindedness, single mindedness? If, you, if your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes evil, your whole body will be full of darkness. In other words, your body's going to do what you're thinking of. If therefore the light in you be darkness, how great is that darkness? Verse 24. No man can be double-minded, can serve two masters, and be successful. For either he hate the one, love the other, or else you hold the one, and despise the other. You can't serve God a mammon. Verse 25. Therefore, I say to you, Jesus is speaking, take no thought. Okay? Take, I mean, we're going to discuss how we can keep from taking thought in a minute. Take no thought for your life. What you'll eat, what you'll drink, for your body, what you put on, is not life more than meat and the body than raiment. Yes, it is. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, it's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Right? Romans 14, 17. Verse 26. Behold, look at the fowls of the air. They don't sow and they don't reap, nor gather into barns, but our Heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you much better than they? Which one of us, by taking a thought, remember that terminology, taking a thought, which one of us, by taking a thought, can add one cubit unto his statue? Who's got another translation of verse 27? Read me a modern day translation on that. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? I love that. <clears throat> Read that again. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? What is worry? But what what is it in light of what we're talking about? Fear. fear. What? Fear. It's fear, and it's a. It comes by how? A thought. Uh -huh. Yeah. You start thinking on it. it consumes you. Oh, what if? Oh, what am I going to do? Oh no. <laughs> and just takes over. Okay. Which of us? can add a single hour to our life by getting upset and worried over it. It don't do anything but take hours from us. That's the deception. The devil makes you think, oh, i got to do it. I can't control it. i got to do it. You know, because it's so important. Thinking that it's going to solve something. But in fact, it's actually taken away from your victory, from your life, from your peace. Isn't that amazing? You know, that's... Remember this, guys. That's how the devil works. He makes it look like it's going to work for you. It's the easier way when it's really death, doom, and destruction. We have we have a, a, a friend that we minister to. He says, well, I, I just, I don't want to try because I'm afraid I'll fail. So I just want the easy way. I just want to ignore everything. It's God way. And my question is, okay, so the, so you're thinking that it's going to be easier by just leaving God out. But you know, that's a lie of the devil. He's telling you, well, because I can't, I'm not going to resist the devil, I don't have to expend any effort. I can just keep going on sliding down the muddy bank until I hit the pit of hell. That's basically what's happening. You see what I mean? But what the devil's saying is it's easier this way. 
Well, it's easier for a while, but the problem is, is that you're going downhill the whole time. And you're going to end up in a worse place than ever. It's, going to, it's getting worse, not better. But he's telling you all that time, it's easier, it's easier. No, it's getting worse, it's getting worse. If you don't stop it by resisting those thoughts and saying no to them, then it's going to end you up in a much worse position than you ever wanted to be. It's that trap, that snare again, with the food inside and the door shut behind you. None of us can add any life, any time to our lives, by thinking worrisome